Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and today I'm going to be playing the most competitive tanks in the game, at least in my opinion, for game modes such as Onslaught, or maybe if you just want to tear it up inside the random queue as well. Onslaught will be coming back this year at a time that it has yet to be said by Wargaming, but they confirmed it inside their Future of World of Tanks 2023 video. So if you want to be able to get yourself some pretty funky styles, like the one that I'm showing off here on my Type 4 Heavy, then or Type 5 Heavy even, then you're going to have to compete. And also, if you want to be able to get pieces of equipment, like I have on my AMX M454, like the Bond Turbo, well then, you're probably going to have to compete as well. So, the first vehicle that I would thoroughly recommend for competitive game modes is the AMX M454. It, you should be, unless you've been hiding under a rock, you'll know that very much so that Wargaming buffed the hell out of this thing last year. They buffed it up so much so that it basically became the, the only pick that you could really make uh, with regards to heavy tanks uh, inside a tech tree to be competitive at tier 10 heavy. However, while Wargaming did buff this thing massively, uh, they buffed its hit points up, its speed up, and its damage per minute up, its accuracy up, its gold pen up, yeah, pretty much everything that you would want. They did realize they made a very significant mistake, and then they did tune the statistics down, removing the hit points and removing the speed buff that they gave to the vehicle, but leaving the alpha damage, 560. Well, it always was 560, it's just you could never really use this 130mm gun and be competitive because it didn't have the gold pen, it didn't have the accuracy, and more importantly, it didn't have the DPM. But now it does. And even with the, the slight drawback on the nerfs, it's still this absolute awesome vehicle to be able to get your hands on. So much so that I've put Bond equipment on it. I've got Bond Vent, Bond Gun Rammer, and Bond Turbo. However, I'm still trying to get the field mods, so I can't use two builds. And um, I would, uh, for my second build on this vehicle, actually switch out the vents on a city map to be using a durability device instead. Because keeping your tracks on when you're trying to be competitive is oh so important especially for a game mode like onslaught where if you do get tracked it's quite often then you miss a shot or there'll be three different vehicles that'll be on you especially if you're getting caught out on your flank if you're getting caught out in the open by good players which you will eventually be playing against them if you are being competitive in onslaught will be a death sentence all right then so amx m454 where am i going to go well i'm going to try and put this bond turbo to good use and i'm going to try and cross here Whenever I play Erlenberg Assault, I always like to take the fight to the enemy team, come what may. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing. This vehicle is a frontal assault tank, but it has very poor side armor, so I'm going to have to watch out about that. But it looks like the enemy team are actually allowing us across. So, of course, I've got artillery to watch out for, but I, I should be good here. So, VZ-55 and CS-63, will those be vehicles which I'm talking about with regards to a competition in World of Tanks? Or are you just going to have to hang around and take a look? Or I guess you could have read the description, or I don't even know which one I'm going to put in a thumbnail. However, ooh, this alpha damage. Wow, look at that difference in the RNG. 628 and then 451. Yeah, a bit of a disparity there. But look how quickly this thing reloads. It's absolutely bonkers. And all I need is most likely just a pixel on the back of the CS63. Or just a few pixels. Mate, mate, how much more do you want me to expose my tank? Okay, there you go. That's a good so I bounce an E4 just casually off the front of this vehicle. This thing's armor is so low skill cap. Really, it's just stick the thick part towards your opponents and hope they ricochet and more often than not they will ricochet which is one of the reasons why this vehicle is so crazy so i'm so tall that i'm actually going to go through the water here i think it's actually for the best if i was a shorter tank i would drown here but i'm not I'm a nice tall boy we could just go through the water with our turret above there old sport good stuff all right so i've managed to at least get my opponents out of this flank now what i'm going to do here is uh continue to push through and just swing on the left so I still don't get caught out. I don't want to get caught by that E4 or that E3. It was the E4 that hit me, yeah. So there's two American tier 10 tank destroyers that are going to be down this flank. And now it's just about trying to make my way across here. Now, I've never tried doing this, but I think in a nice tall tank like this, I could probably snorkel my way along here. Am I really going to do this in a live video? Am I really going to do this in a live video? This seems pretty crazy. I'm not sure if I can even do this. If I drown myself... This, that'll be, that'll be funny, won't it? Oh, QB, he's, he's told everyone to, uh, to get the M454 and he drowns himself in a live video. As long as the E4 doesn't catch me, I should be okay here. Uh-oh, snorkel up there. Yeah, that's a nice tall tank, see? Yeah, that's making the map small. 
This is pretty OP to be able to do this, to be honest. But nice tall tank, All right? All right, so I, this guy knows. Oh, he knows. I'm going to tank. I'm going to have to take some damage here. As long as he doesn't drown me, I should be okay. Oh, Artie's just going to try and get me, though. He could, he could manage to get me here. Unfortunately, that artillery now means that I will get caught as well. The thing is, dude, is I'm pretty tall. I wonder if he can... I'm taller than him, so I guess I can... Can I wedge back? I can. Can I track him underwater? <laughs> what? Bro, I think you played yourself. Oh man, he played himself, but is his is his is his is his tank going to be my grave though? That's the real question. Oh, he doesn't know what he was doing there. Oh, I'll just I'll just clearly just shove him out the way. Did I take some damage from myself there when I rammed him? Hold on, why am I taking am I taking damage when I ram him? Have I found a new mechanic? Hold on, rewind the replay. Did I actually take damage when I rammed? The E4 there? Do you take damage when you ram an E4? This is when it's drowned itself. Who's taking damage? Is it him or is it me? So weird. Anyway, this vehicle is a big old boy, so ramming is also pretty good because I think this thing weighs 70 tons. Okay, hello E3. What's up? How you doing? You having a good day? Having a good World of Tanks day? I have to load some gold against him there. I wonder if I got spotted. Anyway, I've never done that before, but that actually worked out better than I could ever imagine. Nice try by the E4 to uh, to deal with me there, but it just wasn't quite enough for him. Uh, hopefully these bond vents will be giving enough vision. Um, one of the downsides, of course, without the field mods, is I don't have the improved view range that I would have from the other field mod. I don't need improved view range to see that, though. <laughs> I can't believe I low roll so hard! Oh my good god, I don't catch the T92 because of it! Oh, and the E3 was right there in front of me. Are you actually kidding me? How was he right there? Oh, I can't believe there's an artillery alive because of that low roll. What a joke. Does this E3 spot me right now? I don't think he does. He might do, though. Does he spot me? Those bushes are pretty messed up, let me tell you. I need him to, like, overangle his side. Oh, it's like a 50-50 if that one went in or not. Um, all right, we're going to have to take our time here. Well, unfortunately, even if I do play the most OP tanks, it doesn't mean that I'm going to win any of the games that I play today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, is he going to try and blind fire me now? No, he's not. Unfortunately, the E3 is such an absolute warrior. There we go. Right through the side. Right through the side. We're still down by 4,000 hit points. Oh, like 3,500. I can catch this guy on the side again. No! Come on, Artie. Oh, no, our Artie's getting caught. How can I deal with this E3 without dying? That's the question. How can I deal with this E3 without dying? Unfortunately, this is where you need, like, tier 10 gold rounds to be able to go through his weak point. I could fire some HE rounds at him, which might put him down to, like, a two-shot. Or I could just shoot this guy. Why didn't I see that? Big misplay there by me. I mean, E3's going to get me if I get caught up on that ridge line, that's for sure. Such a pain to be able to dig out an E3. I mean, there are very few counters for a vehicle like this, but that E3 is definitely one of them. I could get spotted here, but I... Hold on. Did that go between his hull and his turret? Where did that shell even go? That's two rewinds that... I, obviously, I'm just trying to get my, like, um my YouTube algorithm, so when you rewind the video and you watch it twice, that's that's the ultimate kind of like watch time when you think about it, right boys and girls? Lol 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 lol. But yeah, that's kind of two rewinds in this video alone. Ah, ah, can I manage to finish this guy off? Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure the only thing that's about to be finished off is me, boys and girls. I think I'm going to get caught here, but I try it. Why can't I see that E3 anymore? What? I got spotted by the BZ though, that's for sure. He doesn't want to come around the corner. Let me guess. Here comes the T92 shell that I low rolled on. I mean, you couldn't script it, could you? What an unlucky game for me. What an unlucky game for me. And why is this TVP not playing? Uh, I guess he's just waiting for them to rush him at the end of the game. Oh my lord, I would have never have thought that I would have low rolled so hard against that RT. Oh well. Anyway, that still shows you exactly why the M454 is good. Just drive into some some tank destroyers and somehow manage to get away with it. I think if I got a little luckier here, uh, I could have managed to get through it. But I still think it was a fun game. 
and you really can't go wrong with the M454 in the random queue, and you definitely can't go wrong uh, with it in Onslaught. Anyway, that was my first big pick. My next big pick, let's play the best medium. So the best medium is the CS63. If you like playing fast tanks, or even if you don't, nobody can deny that having speed on the battlefield allows you to do things that other tanks can only dream of. And the CS63 is no exception. I am probably going to end up buying bond vents for this thing. Uh, because the bond vents will allow me to just about get enough view range, as you can see on the minimap, to have 445. Without even having to use coated optics. But I do have a second build on this tank, which is vision system and coated optics for more spotting based maps. But I don't think I really need that on the old free-to-play account. Um, on a map like this, at least. I mean, it's always nice to have extra view range, but I should be okay. So the CS63, it's the fastest medium tank inside the game. Uh, it's definitely worth using a turbo on this vehicle, not to get the extra top speed inside the travel mode, but to get the extra top speed inside the uh, outside of the travel mode. And that's because this vehicle has a, a turbo, and I'm not talking about a turbocharger to increase its speed, I'm talking about, uh, what, what are we going to call this, the turbo? I like to call it the travel mode because I think it differentiates it and makes it more simple. And this travel mode puts the top speed up to 70. Uh, before you use equipment. And so that means that I could go at 75 now, pretty much upslope as well, because the field mods are pretty wild on this. And that means that you kind of get into position first, and you start to control the positions first. But the reason why I like to use a turbo on this vehicle is because if you don't, well, you're going to have a bit of a hard time in outside of the speed mode, because your reverse speed actually gets very poor on this vehicle. Very poor indeed. Um, that was a bit greedy of me there to, to sit in front of that tank, and unfortunately he did hit me right on the, uh, the side of the, the turret, which is the, the weakness of this vehicle. Luckily he didn't get me twice. I don't know if he's using the single shotgun or if he's using the, uh, the double gun. There's a lot of, because the VZ-55 is currently top of the tree, there's a lot of single shot users in the VZ-55. And I think he fired so quickly there that he's using the single shotgun. One way that you can tell is by looking at their hit points. If they don't have any field mods and they've only got 2,100 hit points, that most likely means that they've just got the vehicle and it's fresh and they won't have that double shot gun. I can imagine the uh, three mark requirements in the VZ-55 must be in going down like Bitcoin right about now because a lot of people getting that, and especially playing it without field mods, but more importantly without playing with that double gun, the double shot gun will be rough. Anyway, CS-63. It's just this really nice ridgeline sniper. It just gets into position and it just annoys and it gets into positions fast. And this vehicle pretty much meant that you couldn't play light tanks inside Onslaught. And really, when you think about it, you can't even play... I mean, light tanks are only useful when there's a huge amount of players in artillery, right? Because the more amount of players there are, the better that our uh, light tanks will be able to scale. This 121B is doing a really good job there. I shouldn't be exposing that much of my turret against him. It's a bit of a misplay by me. I'm wondering if this E4 is going to be shootable. He nearly was. This 121B is locked down, and I'm hoping that my artillery can be able to focus them. Well, they're trying. It's unfortunately not a good shot, but they're trying at least. I think in this situation, I can just afford to relax and chill. E4 is caught-ish. Does he have durability? It doesn't look like he does. He's got 2,040 hit points, though, so I guess he's taken one of the field mods to increase his hit points. What is that, at the expense of rate of fire? That seems pretty crazy for me on an E4. I know the E4 isn't really the kind of tank which is meant to be focused on DPM, but it still feels a little redonkulous to uh, to make that sacrifice. The APCR rounds on this vehicle, by the way, uh, really do scale very well. 315 pen is just going to be so much better than the 258 on your standard rounds, but the 258 standard rounds ain't bad. And this is the part of the game where playing in a vehicle like this feels oh so fun in the random queue. But also in Onslaught. Remember in Onslaught you're also competing in different ways. You're competing against your team for damage done and assistance done in a win. Uh, because the people who finish on the top are the ones who end up getting the most of the, uh, the points. And so I found that this vehicle was very proficient at being able to get points by simply being the first one in those kind of poaching situations at the end of the game. All right, so I'm going to go in against this FP405. This is so dangerous. I could get one shot here. Oh, wow, he got absolutely eviscerated. And unfortunately, you're going to see that this vehicle, its bloom when you're inside the travel mode is horrendous. Well, there goes my um, my pension, so to say, at the end of the game. Disappeared. Thanks, inflation. 
God, all this talk about Bitcoin's inflation. Oh my God. I have to just focus on the, on the game. Oh, I'll talk about focus on the game. You can focus on playing a tank that requires two hands now, Mr. Arty. Ha 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 ha. Nah, he's just going to wait for a couple of minutes to uh, play. All right, I'm going to switch to gold rounds here. Um, right now, I almost think that this might be a capping moment, but also it's quite tricky. Like, if you cap and then they make it back together, then you haven't managed to to, to whittle them down, right? Whereas, oh, this is definitely not a capping moment. This is a I'll help you, Mr. Leopard moment. We'll switch to our regular rounds. I don't need gold for this, even though the gold would still help. It's just such a lovely sniper. It's basically like a leopard with armor at this point. This is where the gold round would help. Is it just an E50 now? Oh, let's go say hi to him. Hello, E50. How are you doing? Having a good day? I shouldn't have been in the speed mode there. Bit of a misplay by me. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bad game for a CS63, but it's a win. And I showed you why this tank is strong. You can be first to the position. And if you're first to the position, then you dictate the pace of the engagement. And also in Onslaught, quite often, the first person into position also starts to get um, the, what's it called? You start to get the airdrops. You know, you, you go into position, you capture the circle, and then you've got the nuke that then you can deploy on your opponents. And then suddenly the whole battle starts to go in your favor. So that's why the CS63 is MVP for Onslaught, because you're fast into position, you start to contest the objective, and you can just bully lights. So if the light gets there, you get there at the same time, if not faster, and then that will be just game done. And so that's why the CS63 had by far the highest win ratio uh, for me out of all of the vehicles that I was playing. So now I'm also gonna talk about the VZ55. Now I just got this vehicle uh, on my free to play account. Yes, I've been playing it uh, along with the, the top of the tree. And so keep in mind that this is not really the optimal version of the VZ55. This isn't me with field mods. This isn't me, I believe even with 100% crew right now. I think I'm probably using like a 95% crew or roughly on this vehicle. Well, it didn't stop me the other day in my Badger. I really hope you all enjoyed that video. Uh, by the way, with those kind of recommendations for all of the uh, the new players, or even just the, the new tanks that you can be able to get, how to play without, how to play like a, a stock vehicle, so to say, brutal at tier ten. So how am I going to play my stock vehicle here? Well, I'm gonna hopefully use my knowledge of the map to dictate the engagement. That's what we're going to do. So VZ55, I could go middle, but I think I'm fast enough to go north. So this tank is special because it has a two round 130 millimeter autoloader. However, I don't have the autoloader on this tank yet. So I'm basically going to be like a WZ111 5A, just with a much worse rate of fire as far as I can tell, because obviously this thing can't use a gun rammer. And while the DPM is quite impressive on the single shot gun, it's still not anywhere near as what a WZ111 5A could be. But I do have that one extra degree of gun depression. I'd say I've got better weak points than a WZ-111 5A. Arguably a bigger lower plate though. But also one of the things that's crazy about this tank is its lower hull armor is angled. And so that means that you can kind of angle like this and bait people into shooting your tracks and get away with it. Okay, this fight's quite interesting. More gun depression, mid amount of gun depression, low amount of gun depression. And so if we have uh, eight degrees like I have on this vehicle, then hopefully I can manage to make my way up here. And oh, that's a disaster. Uh, hopefully I don't lose two. Oh, he's only got one shot left. I'm going to say minus two. I'll help you. He's reloading. He's reloading. He's reloading. He's reloading. He, he's given the game away. He's actually trying to run right now. If he hasn't reloaded. Okay, he didn't reload it. He's dry then. Oh, no. He's got friends though. Do I have friends? That was really interesting that Kranvang didn't reload there, by the way. And this is where this tank without the autoloader, it just sucks. That's the only way to say it. Because if I had the autoloader, I could be able to dump out two rounds. Um, but without the autoloader, I just can't do that. I'm quite impressed this Kranvang is still alive. Well, was still alive. Okay, I have to drop back here and hope that I don't get caught by the 705A. Um, it's not to run away, but it is to just try and make sure that these guys can't uh, farm all my friends. So you'll see that... I fall back, they think I'm leaving, but I'm actually not. I'm actually here. I'm actually tracking you, Mr. Granvong. That's right. So, 
I don't want to screw my friends over entirely. I can't get that Grenvang's lower plate anymore, so I'm still going to pretend that I'm away. Maybe I can get this 705A inside. What's this Grenvang doing? Oh, easy. Oh, no. There's a VZ-55 there, and there's a BZ-75 behind me. Oof, sir. Oof, sir! Where's my autoloader, man? I need to make my better trades, dude. Oh, there's so many tanks behind me soon. Ah, oh, I didn't even get the extra shot in. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I got killed by Norway's! No, they sent in the oil and the, the, the great riches to afford a well-paid society where everyone makes a good wage. Oh, no. Shame. Shame, shame. So what did I do wrong here? Well, honestly, this was as if you play an autoloader without an autoloader. The whole point of this tank is it delivers those two shells and then it spends a while uh, uh, doing other things. But really, the main reason why we lose this is because we have a huge amount of vehicles invested over on the other part of the map and we just got caught out by an overmatch. Look how, I guess, the middle got caught with the 30B and the, uh, the 13105 and the 50B, I should say. And um, unfortunately, if you've got people just camping towards the south and they don't really do anything, I guess they got one kill. It's just really not enough. Um, so well played to the enemy team. They got us good. VZ-55. Uh, it's definitely much, much better with the autoloader. So if any of you have just got this tank and you're kind of suffering a little bit with that single shotgun, never fear. Because when you get that autoloader, things do get a lot better with this tank. Just being able to make those two shell trades is what you really want to do. And playing this thing without a gun rammer as some kind of like pseudo WZ 1115A, it's not great. Okay, so I've played, in my opinion, the three most meta heavy tanks that you can play, except for one. And that, of course, would be the Super Conqueror. But for me, it's a work in progress. However, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for a YouTube exclusive, I just bought the Conqueror and I will christen it with my very first game. I've not played this tank at all. I'm setting up with durability vents and a gun rammer and that's because you can't equip the turret or the uh, gun on this tank without taking the tracks. But I don't want to spend 23,000 on the tracks so I'll make do with the durability device and then eventually when I get the gun and, uh, and the turret then I'll drop the durability device and I'll use a turbo instead, otherwise this vehicle can be quite slow. Luckily, I do have the engine already because I have the Conway, I believe. And I've also got the Centurion 7-1 on this account, as well as the Badger. So it's always nice to have the top engine right from the get-go. So I've taken my crew from my Conqueror. They're not in the best of shape right now, but hopefully we'll still be good. So keep in mind, this as well isn't going to be the Conqueror in its finest form on my free-to-play account, but hopefully we'll still do good as well. And maybe, just maybe, we'll make a little bit of YouTube magic with the very first game in this tank. Now, the Conqueror, when it's stock, actually has crazy good damage per minute. I am firing over 12 rounds a minute, and keep in mind, this isn't with the best of crews right now. And 12 rounds a minute, when you have 280 alpha damage, means that I'm packing, what, like 3,400 DPM? Something scary like that? That's crazy how good the damage per minute is on the Conqueror. Now, the problem is, is that my penetration is atrocious, and I've taken far too many HE rounds here, thinking that I actually have the top gun. I should definitely not be taking that many HE rounds, and I should be probably loading a lot more gold than I actually am. But oh well. One thing that's interesting about the stock turret on the Conqueror is it's actually not all that bad. The stock turret on the Conqueror is pretty darn good, it's basically just missing the space protection over the um, the sides of the of the tank. But apart from that, it's all right. Of course, it's better when you have the top turret and you do have that extra space protection. But playing without it shouldn't be still too bad. All right, so I'm going to make my way up on the hill. And this top engine is obviously working out. But the lack of ground resistance improvements from the tracks is still going to make me quite slow being able to get there. And this is really where I'd love a turbo on a vehicle like this. I do think the Conqueror is a vehicle that demands a turbo. And I'm sure that with the new experimental equipment going inside the game, already is, if you are lucky enough to get your hands on it, then there will be people who will be putting turbos that also improve their gun handling on the Conqueror. Although I don't really feel like the gun handling is all that important to improve on this tank. I think most people will be probably looking at actually improving their ammo rack and maybe their fuel tanks on a vehicle like this by using the enhanced durability device, which would scale very, 
well on this tank indeed. Okay, cool. So I'm playing against a Conqueror on the enemy team and a BZ-68. And their VZ-51 has actually managed to go towards the southwest. So they're wanting to pressure our cap circle. But I still feel like claiming the hill is very important. Because here's the thing. You can kind of defend your cap circle as long as you have this part of the map. But if you lose the hill, this part of the map will just melt. All of these players will be farmed as soon as one or two players get along this ridgeline. So what I have to do is try and get up there. But the problem is, is that, oh no, there's a Kampfpanzer. This is just an unmitigated disaster. That is one of the most scary tanks you'll ever play at tier 9. And I can't pen that thing in the turret unless I hit its weak point right about, I would say, there. But um, didn't quite work out. And I've got a BZ-58 that's managed to get up there as well. Oi, oi, oi. My Emil is going for it. It's going to be a little bit awkward for him. I lost my VZ-55 game. That wasn't um, exactly a surprise. And unfortunately for me, the Conqueror turret isn't quite working out here. But it looks like this Emil is on the warpath. So I guess I've got to go with him. What else do? What, uh, what else can I do? Just sit back and just get farmed by a Kampfpanzer? No, I need to turn this into a hull fight because... I reckon, while I've got a pretty bad lower plate on this tank... Oh, man, this is starting to get ugly. Anyone got that really nice gun on this vehicle? Not me. Luckily, I can't pen his upper hull. If I had the gold rounds, I could probably pen his upper hull. Oh, luckily, my armor seems to be working out. I can't pen that guy's turret, but maybe I can hit the weak point on top. And this is where the Conqueror is actually pretty good, actually. Yeah, just tag it away at their weak points. Maybe I can try and tag away at this guy's weak point as well. Gonna have to aim a little bit better than that against the Kampfpanzer. Anyone got like a non-90% crew right about now? Oh, this would be such a nice team if I could have the... Uh... They're trying me there. And this is where this thing is just so awesome. Just great, really. I need the gold on the 120mm to deal with this uh, Kampfpanzer though. A little bit rough to try and deal with him. Talking about gold, I'm firing a lot of gold right now, aren't I? That one didn't go through, he said. I've already spent, like, a, a mountain of credits right now. As soon as I give up this position, this game is done. Ah, uh, but it's done! It's done! Ah, uh, great! What what can I do? A basically better team just wins. They managed to take the hill. Congrats to them. i got to try and leave the hill, I guess, and try and maybe sit down below the hill. Maybe this guy is stupid. Maybe... I don't have a choice here. I think I've got to just go and sit here and then hope that they come after me, maybe. Um, that's it. I don't think that's all they can do. Um, I think I just got to just chill here now and just hope that we can get some vision and get some shots from above. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a real ugly round, but uh, I feel like this is my best bet. Um, I guess I should have fallen back a little bit earlier and tried to get the shells in, but um, I didn't quite manage it. I'm not sure if they can come after me. My position could actually be really good right now for holding these guys back. Oh, hello. That's interesting. Try and flip him. Okay. Well, that's one way to get rid of a tank, I guess. Definitely not the most graceful way to play World of Tanks, that's for sure. Not from him, not from me, but all right, dude. Fine. I'll take everything that I can get right now. Um, so I'm just trying to spot right now, trying to see if I can get these opponents to make any mistakes. Hopefully we can stop him from getting my lower plate here. Oh, the Kampfpanzer gets me from above. Well played, dude. Well played. GG. That was a good one. I was I was going to try and see if I could get that 703, but let's be honest, it wasn't really going to make too much of a difference. All right, so what went wrong here? Well, what went wrong here is we just saw that, well, I'm not, I'm not the best player. I'm an okay player. When I have to play these stock tanks, I'm still not having great results. Like 2,600 combined, it's not the best result in World of Tanks. It was just a situation of when maxed out completely OP tanks can manage to get into position first because you don't have the field mods, you don't have a turbo, you don't have the tracks, you don't have all of the advantages, and then you don't have the top gun when you're in a position it's a little bit ugly. So let's say that you don't have a CS-63 or you just really don't want to play uh, a Polish medium tank and you can't get used to the turbo on that vehicle. What other options do you have? Well, firstly, I would recommend the SDB-1. The SDB-1 is a fabulous hold down medium tank, but I just don't have the 6 million credits to be able to show it to you today. So I would recommend instead uh, either the STB-1 or the UDES if you don't have the uh, CS-63. So I'm going to play a game in the UDES and give it my best shot and show you what this tank is all about. 
So the UDES and the STB1 are all about ridge line work. And one of the great things about Onslaught is that you can choose what tank you're going to play on the map that you get on. And so if you find yourself on El Halouf, well, you're probably going to end up playing something like a CS63 to race into position. However, if you end up on like Live Oaks or Westfield, uh, whichever one it was called, I think it was Westfield is the one that I was thinking, then you could pick yourself an STB1 and go and work the ridge lines because those vehicles have got incredible gun depression. So I've got two builds for this tank. I got vents with a gun rammer and coated optics, and I got vents with commander's vision system and coated optics. If I'm on my main account, I don't really need coated optics on this tank. And so my second, my first build would be with a turbo instead, and my second build would be with an exhaust instead of the coated optics. As I said in my masterclass video, and that can give this vehicle outrageous camo rating, as it actually has one of the best camos in the game. Oh, it's Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris, Chuck Norris. Um, Chuck Norris was fun for about a battle or two, uh, and then I think there's probably a reason why I'm not playing my Udes very much on my free-to-play account, even though I do have this fancy skin, which... A lot of people managed to get from my Twitch drops last month. So thank you very much to you, Wargaming, for enabling such cool styles to be available just for uh, checking out terrible streams like Uncle Quanky Bamps on the old Twitch. Uh, yeah, so the Udes. Um, all in all, it's just basically like a great hull-down tank. It doesn't have the best ammunition. Oh, my God. Oh, it definitely doesn't have the best ammunition. It's actually only got 254 of APCR, which is not as good as AP when we think about it. And its heat is 310. Now, 310 is not as bad as something like a Kranvang, which I think packs 300, but it's still not great. And it definitely does struggle against quite a few plates. Like an AMX M454 is going to have a hard time. Uh, well, you're going to have a hard time playing against an AMX M454. But with 440 alpha damage on a medium tank, you can actually make really good trades. So I'm going to go straight forwards here, um, and I'm going to go hold down, and I'm going to use my 12 degrees of gun depression or more. I think it's 12 degrees, actually, when I think about it. So hopefully chase. I don't, I don't think this 50B has many shells. I'm actually going to try and overmatch his tracks. And that's because I've got a 120 millimeter caliber gun. Uh, so I can actually overmatch his tracks, and I can keep shooting. Yeah, boy. There we go. He's gone. I can do the same to the SDB1 because he's got 35 millimeters of side armor. But luckily... Okay. What's up with the games today, man? The games just seem to be just so outrageously fast. Either my team is getting shafted or we are shafting the enemy team. Although this is kind of scary. They're all going to sit in front of a load of tank destroyers now. Um, this is actually turning into a bit of a disaster. Unless we all go around the corner very aggressively. It's not going to work. I'm actually going to change to a heat round here for the Type 4 Heavy. I don't need to repair my fuel tanks because I'm on my main uh, free-to-play account. Ha! <laughs> would, I'd hope to be doing a little bit better if I was on my main account. Uh, okay, they are actually getting rushed now. So this is... Uh, we have to just go in. Oh, arty party! Luckily, I saved my med kit from earlier, so I should be okay. Okay, now I really can't use my uh, repair kit on my fuel tanks, so I've got to watch out for that. Got to go after this guy. Obviously, they got a load of TDs above me. But i got to be able to get some shots in here as well. That was very considerate driving by the 121. If he'd just driven straight up behind me, I wouldn't have been able to reverse that. So, shout out to you, Mr. 121. That was actually pretty nice. After your funny driving earlier, you have redeemed yourself. And, um, yeah, this is just World of Tanks in a nutshell, man. It's farm or be farmed. I think that's how the game works. And, well, today I'm definitely not going to end up with my best win ratio that I've ever had. Um, at least you can see what all of these vehicles end up playing as. And I have to admit, if I'd had like the fully upgraded Conqueror, or I'd had the fully upgraded VZ-55, maybe I could have done better today. Or why don't you come uh, along and check out the old, uh, the old streams as I'm basically growing the VZ-55 and see whether I'm going to end up being terrible or not. I think it's quite funny that the vehicle that I play last is the vehicle that's actually going to be the best here. Good old Udez. It's not a tank which I ever really think about, but dude, is it performing. I'm going to be able to overmatch this guy's side if I can catch him. He's going to overangle. I missed his tracks because I'm a noob. Don't want to get farmed by the tortoise. Who should I shoot right now? This guy or the tortoise? He's actually doing a pretty good job. I think I'll just track him, honestly. Doesn't look like he has a repair kit. Bless him. Got him again. E50 up on the hill. Hopefully this tortoise fires. It doesn't matter anymore. Let's just go after him. Let's try and go for the weak one. Never mess with me. Never must mess with me, says Chuck. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to live. 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 
I want to live, I want to live. So I can deliver that shot. <laughs> oh, man. I'm feeling a little bit more relaxed now, YouTube. After what was a horrible session uh, of games in what was meant to be the most OP tanks, uh, I was really worried I wasn't going to have any half-decent rounds. But luckily, this one seems to be going fairly well. This one seems to be going fairly well. And yeah, Udez, it's great. It's a great vehicle for uh, Onslaught. It's a great vehicle for the random queue as well. No, why do you have to catch me, E50? Not my lower plate. Nice shot, bud. All right, well, we did pretty much nearly 8,000 combined here in a sub five minute game. And that's because this vehicle has all the DPM. It's got all the alpha damage. And more often than not, that's all you need. And this vehicle, completely interchangeable with an STP-1. The STP-1 will do just as well, if not better, than this tank. They're just a little different. The UDES, the higher alpha damage. The STP-1, the more wild rate of fire. And, and also, the STP-1 has the better gold pen. So, uh, probably for random Q, UDES. Probably for pure competitive, maybe you want to focus on the stb1 instead and wow that 277 he actually got a radley walters medal that was his first ever radley in 10 in 10,000 games and his new kill record oh wow we should send him a message congrats on uh congrats on eight kills your first your first happy face awesome ah oh, there we go there we go can't believe he did it in like five minutes as well well, I'm kind of happy that I died there so he could be able to pick up the E50 at the end. All right, we're going to boost that. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, definitely not the best rounds for me today, but happy that I got to see somebody's first Radley Walters at the uh, at the end there. It's always special, even for me, when you see it happen. So, again, my top picks. AMX M54 and Super Conqueror. If you want to play something a little bit more cheeky, VZ55, and then... Don't play any light tanks. Sorry, they're just not really valid for at least for onslaught, but they can work for for the random queue, of course. Tank destroyers wouldn't really recommend any of them. You can play something funky like the Fosh B or the Minotauro, or sometimes even the 268 version 4. But really, it's only medium tanks and heavy tanks that are competitive for onslaught. And of course, CS63, number one, and then it's the the two hull down brothers, the the Udez and the STB1. I'll say the Udez is better for the random queue purely because it can get outrageous camo, uh, but you don't really need camo rating at all for Onslaught, so you're better to have the raw firepower that the STB1 brings. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, those were the hot tanks that I'm going for on my free-to-play account, all played live. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what tanks you are going for at the moment. Are you planning on playing them in the random queue? Planning on playing them in Onslaught? What are your goals for the kinds of vehicles that you're getting and why? Or are you just trying to get funny, big alpha damage tanks, huh? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.